processor complex. Seeing the 3090 now at an early point in your training helps you visualize some of the other information you'll receive as training progresses. What you will see is a walk around view of the 3090. You will see major components such as the various frames and gates and control panels. You will be told about what functions are packaged on these various components. After viewing this video presentation, you should be able to recognize the frames that make up the system, identify the various technologies used, and be able to identify where various functions are located. The areas of the machine you will be looking at are the processor control element, or PCE, the processor complex, and the coolant and power distribution frames, or CDF and PDF. The first unit you are going to see contains the processor controller element. This is the front of the PCE. With the covers closed, you are able to access the operator's panel. This panel contains the system power on-off controls, diskette files, a drawer for storing system diskettes, the service support display select switch, and the unit emergency power off switch. Opening the end cover allows service personnel to gain access to the service panel. This panel contains two sets of indicators and switches for the PCE's two processors. Lights and switches used to indicate and control PCE power and provide for IMLing the control processors and the service support display select switch. This switch allows a single display station to be used as a service console for either PCE processor. It allows the display to be physically switched between the A side and the B side processors. These power supplies provide AC power for the two processors. They are designed to slide out from this end to facilitate replacement. The PCE contains two processors, one of which is used for backup. It has been designed with all the components supporting processor A mounted on the left and all the components for processor B mounted on the right. An exception to this is the Seagate, which contains circuitry common to both processors. This is the A side of the PCE. The covers on this unit are similar to others elsewhere in the system. The tambour portion of the door slides into the rigid section. Once the tambour section is completely opened, the rigid section can be released and the entire door opened. This is the Seagate. It contains PTCS7, which is the only circuitry common to both processors. This is the card side of the A side processor. The pin side of the processor is totally enclosed. Access to the pins for scoping or taking measurements is gained by removing this cover. Cables connecting the processor controller A side to the processor complex are attached to this tailgate. This CE panel is for the A side processor. It contains lights and switches for monitoring the A side processor. The B side of the PCE is nearly identical to the A side. It contains the B side processor, a CE panel for the B side processor, and a tailgate to connect the PCE B side to the processor complex. Now take a look at the processor complex. This is frame one. The B gate contains power thermal control station one and the logic support adapter. PTCS1 allows the processor controller to control power and monitor cooling in frame one while the LSA provides the interface between the processor controller and the processor complex. Power supplies for frame one are located here. This TCM board is gate D. It is unique because it has only six TCM sites. It contains circuitry for the storage control element and expanded storage controller. This is the end of frame one.
This blue cabling is the high-speed tri-lead used in the 3090. Note how it is draped loosely without any sharp bends. These cables must be handled carefully. Cables from the processor controller element are connected to the processor complex using this tailgate. On this side of frame 1, you see the F-gate. It is card on board technology and contains the storage arrays for the processor memory element. This is frame 2, gate C. It contains the storage arrays for the expanded storage element which uses card on board technology. Gate latches can be locked by screwing them into the frame. It may be necessary to turn the latch in order to unlock it. Releasing the gate latch and opening the gate gives you access to the two TCM boards containing the 3090's processors. The upper TCM board is the D gate and contains central processor 1. The lower gate is the E gate and contains central processor 2. Both TCM boards are removed from the frame from the rear. This stack of power supplies provide power to the TCM components in frame 2. Because of the power supplies, weight, and location, a special lift tool, part of the 3090 ship group, is used to remove the power supplies. The use of this lift tool will be shown in another video. Now look at the other side of frame 2. This small gate is F gate. It contains PTCS2. The power supplies for PTCS2 are located here. This large gate contains power supplies for the expanded storage array. The PTCS and the power supply gates are both hinged so they can be moved completely out of the way of the two TCM boards. The TCM boards are hinged here. When it is necessary to remove one of the boards, it is swung open and placed on a lift tool from the side. This is the B-gate located in the rear of frame 3. It contains half of the total number of channels installed in this processor. This is PTCS3 and it is located on the C-gate. The pin side is accessed from the other side of the frame 3. This TCM board contains the channel control element circuitry. There is a channel built into the frame here that is used along with a special tool to remove the TCM board. Frame 9 contains the tailgate where most of the channel cables are connected. A nice feature of this tailgate is how the serpent connectors are staggered. This allows access to individual channel cables with a minimum amount of disturbance to adjacent cables. This side of frame 3 contains power supplies similar to those in frame 2. Gate D contains the circuitry for the other half of the I.O. channels. It swings open to allow access to the rear of the TCM board and the pin side of the PTCS. Located here beneath the D gate is a small tailgate containing the connectors for eight of the I.O. channels. That completes your tour of the processor complex. Now take a look at the coolant and power distribution frames.
This panel, located on the CDF, contains switches that control the coolant pumps. There's a start-stop switch for each pump and a local remote control switch. Here you can monitor coolant temperature and flow rate. These hoses carry coolant between the processor complex and the CDF. From this side, you can see the heat exchanger, overflow reservoir, and the pumps. This is frame 8. It is located between the coolant distribution frame and the power distribution frame. It contains the circuitry used to sequence power on and off to attach I.O. units. The PDF is located in frame 4. It distributes customer-supplied AC power throughout the 3090 processor complex. 415 Hz power enters the PDF here and is distributed from this panel. On this side of the PDF, you find an MG power control panel. This board contains PTCS4 and the power thermal control adapter, which is the power control interface between the processor controller and the processor complex. This is the power supply for PTCS4. This tailgate is for the PDF to processor controller cabling and the cables carrying power from the PDF to the processor complex. Well, that's how the 3090 processor complex looks. Remember, the purpose of this video is to give you a preview of the 3090. Please return to the terminal to continue the course.